Hello, Utah Christian Fellowship. Welcome to the Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, you got your Bible this evening. We're going to be uh, finishing up on the letter to the Church of Sardis and then get into Philadelphia. Uh, Travis, again, co-hosting with me tonight. Appreciate you being here. Yeah, no problem. Uh, weekly. We missed you last week. Oh, but, but Michael uh, was great. Yeah, Michael was good. Yeah, yeah it was. He, he said he would love to come on anytime. This is kind of uh, something he's tried to encourage us to do over and over. You know, do something online. Use the technology. Um, as a matter of fact, the way he put it was, this is our way to make disciples in this day and age yeah. to reach out. I mean, let's face it, you could have, you know, some of our young people sitting across the table from each other texting rather than having a conversation. Yeah. Um, nobody likes to have a, a verbal conversation anymore. They want to just text. And I even find myself doing that just because I know that's how they communicate. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I'm a guy that prefers to pick up the phone and call somebody. But uh, I think uh, the way we're doing this, uh, we, we have people now on the other side of the U.S. tuning in. Yeah. Which wasn't happening before. Yeah. So, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy that uh, we finally moved into this. Don't like how we had to move into it, but yeah. I'm glad we're there. Yeah, it's pretty neat to see. I mean, like uh, a lot of churches are reaching places they never reached before. Yeah. So a lot of people are hearing the gospel, or you know, for the first time ever, and also growing in a way they've never grown before. Yeah. And so a lot of churches didn't like when the when when COVID nineteen first hit and churches started to shut their doors for a little while. Um, a lot of churches like you know what we're not going to look at this as a something bad. We're going to look at this as an opportunity. To reach more people and from what i've seen people who jump who jumped on this w means of spreading the gospel um like they're they're really reaching a lot of people more so than they would on a sunday morning yeah. you know so yeah and and by the way this is also an avenue for you guys to reach out to people mm -hmm. um if there's somebody you've been praying for you know they need the lord um maybe they're caught up in a cult or atheism or something of that nature mm -hmm. and you just have a heart for them you've been praying for them this is a way to say, hey, tune in. It's no risks. Nobody knows they're really on there. You know, nobody that might pressure them and, and uh, you know, make them feel bad for actually looking at something that I would call a Christian Bible study. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, that may be a way for them to be interested in hearing the truth that they're not hearing. So uh, by all means, invite them even right now. Just uh, take a second and, and uh, throw out a quick invite and say, hey, get on the Bible study. It's starting right now. Yeah. See what happens. And if you were invited, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Uh, feel free to ask any questions, make any comments you'd like to, um, uh, YouTube or, or Facebook. Um, yeah. Since this is live, we'll get to those as soon as we can. There is a small lag. so yeah. But we will get to your questions and your comments. Any prayer requests you want to leave or praise reports, uh, we'll make sure to pray for those things too. Yeah, and uh, particularly prayer reports, uh, praise reports, um, we don't hear a lot of those but i know in the midst of all this craziness god's still moving yeah he's still working yeah um there is one thing i'd like to lift up if we could just um um vincent sanchez uh they call him vicente uh, but he is uh in icu uh because of covid his whole family has gotten it and um he, he is now on a uh, ventilator mm -hmm. so let's pray that he begins to respond and recover uh, you know he he all because he's having a lot of difficulty breathing so we're gonna we're gonna pray for him as we open up today and um let's get started yeah all right father god we just uh, do thank you for the time once again to gather online to uh lord just even though we're apart as a church uh, father in spirit we're connected we're still united and so father i just pray that uh, this would be a means of helping us to uh, just endure the times uh, Father, I just pray that through all of this that you grow us and uh, uh, just put deep within us just a relationship that's solid and on solid ground uh, with your son Jesus. So, Father, use this time, uh, and, and we do want to lift up uh, Vincent to you, uh, who's in the ICU, and uh, Father, also uh, uh, just for one of our other church members who has fallen and uh, is has have, having some uh, issues medically. Uh, Father, I just pray that uh, you bring healing uh, to, to that individual. Uh, they've asked to not share their name, so uh, I'm, I'm not doing that. But, Father, I just pray for their recovery. Uh, Father, as we uh, look at your word tonight, I pray that you look deep within us. If there be uh, any unsavory attitudes, 
uh, any any uh, laziness or lackadaisical attitudes within us, Lord, that you correct those by your spirit and show us uh, where we're not doing all that we can do, even during these times. Uh, Father, uh, we just pray for, for those who are lost, uh, both in our community, even in our households, Father, that you would use these Bible studies to be magnified and glorified. Uh, put your spirit within us in, in uh, a mighty measure. And Father, we just pray that uh, as the word goes out, Lord, we know that your word says it won't return void. And so, Father, we pray that it will find a, a home tonight. And so, Lord, we just thank you for all these things. And uh, we thank you for this time in Christ's name. Amen. 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 All right. Well, we left off on Sardis, and I don't think we got to the part. Uh, we were, you know, it's it Michael and I, but I, there was so much to talk about concerning this uh, church at Sardis. It, it, was, uh, it was in bad shape. I mean, I, I think of all the churches, uh, I, I think it's a toss-up between them and Laodicea, who's worse. But um, uh, Sardis, um, uh, hang on a second. I, I don't know where I'm at on this. If you want to stop for just a second. Yeah, go ahead. This seems to be more of an emergency prayer request. Okay, yeah. So um, Carrie is asking, Carrie Heineke, uh, pray for my niece Tiffany. She's having an emergency C-section. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Okay, well, let's pray for, go ahead and pray for that. Yeah, one, one, for you? sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, Father, we just come before you uh, again, Lord, just to lift up uh, uh, Tiffany to you, Lord, uh, Carrie's niece. And God, she's just going mm. through an emergency C-section. Mm. Father, we pray that all would just be well uh, uh, with, with this delivery. Uh, Father, you just be with the baby as well uh, as, as Tiffany. Uh, Father, I pray, God, that they would come even through a speedy recovery, and, Lord, that you just bless this family. Mm. Uh, Lord, uh, be with them. Give them comfort, and, Lord, we do pray you give them peace. Yes. Uh, Father, provide all their needs like you always have, uh, Lord, and we just lift these things up to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I didn't see that come through. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll just jump back into uh, verse 4. I think is kind of where we left off, but, um, you know, we talked about uh, those, uh, there were a few names in Sardis that were still uh, faithful who hadn't defiled their garments, it says in verse 4, and mm -hmm. they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. And uh, I, I really just thought about this today, like in a, in a deep way. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I think there's a Christianity out there today that says... Uh, you know, we don't have to be concerned with walking in purity or holiness or things like that. Yeah. Uh, we have grace, and they have kind of a um, an attitude towards sin, like, well, those things happen, and, you know, um, can't really be helped. Hmm. And, you know, it, it's just, that's just the flesh in us and no big deal. Now, granted, you're not saved by works. You're not saved by your own goodness. Uh, you're not saved by some level of righteousness or holiness that uh, you attain to that is superior to others. That's, that's not what saves a person. You know, we're saved by grace through faith in Christ. Yeah. But with that faith uh, comes the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, yeah. the impartation of God's wisdom and knowledge to us. There is a new uh, inner voice and a new man that is created uh, after holiness in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So. That's the voice we need to be listening to. That's the voice that ought to be guiding us uh, as Christ walks with us and in us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, you, you got any thoughts you want to share on that? I mean, well, and I've heard it said a lot. Like we're not as followers of Jesus, we're not supposed to make make place like and give place to the flesh. Right. You know, we are to be like we're, we become a new man. The old man's put to death, and we're supposed to follow right. and, and walk in newness of life, not going back to our old fleshly ways. Now I know, look, we're, we are human, but we, right. should, we shouldn't use that as an excuse. Well, we're human, therefore, you know, well, we're going to mess up, so it's okay. It's, right. it's not okay. Right. You know, it's still not okay. Yeah, and I, and I think, um, you know, we, we feel, I, I can actually, you know, um, sympathize with those who, who have that struggle because yeah. We, we do feel powerless when sin gets the upper hand. We do feel defeated. Yeah. We feel, you know, like, uh, you know, that, like Satan got the better of us. Yeah. And we don't want that. Like, the, the, if we're Christians and, and we have the Spirit of God in us, uh, we don't want to fail. We don't yeah. want to sin. But I think sometimes because of the flesh and, and, you know, because of sin, we do feel like we're a failure. 
And that's why, you know, one thing that really encouraged me greatly, yeah. uh, especially when, when I started walking with Christ, is what Paul says in Romans 7. He gives this long explanation that, you know, there is a, a new person created after Christ, you know, uh, within him. And uh, he says, but the, there's a there's a, another law at work here, mm. the law of sin, which comes from the flesh. And that's present with him also. Yeah. And he winds up saying the thing that I uh, would, that means the thing that I know to do, he goes, I don't do that. He goes, the thing I would not, that means the thing I know better than to do. I, I don't want it. I don't want to sin. He goes, that I do. And he goes, and I keep doing. Yep. You know, I think the, the new uh, translations render it that way. And it's like, and, and then he says this, he cries out like, who will save me, a wretched man from this body of death, right? Yeah. That, that he is. He, he admits he's a wretch, you know, that, um, that, that there's something in him that, um, you know, is, is usurping control at times. And, you know, the sin that he doesn't want to do, he finds himself falling to it. And I realize I'm like, you know, Prior to that, I was thinking the Apostle Paul's probably the the next closest thing to Jesus you can find in the Bible yeah. in terms of holiness and knowledge and wisdom and you know rightness. And it's like, and then he said that. Yeah. And so I began thinking, okay, well, it's not just me. All right. It, right. It, you know, anybody who would be honest as a Christian is struggling the same way that you just mentioned. You, yeah. you know. We're struggling against the flesh. And, um, you know, it, it does win sometimes. Yeah. But it shouldn't be, hey, you know what? I'm just throwing up the white flag. I just give in to it. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. That, that shouldn't be the attitude. No, it shouldn't. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that that's something I see here when he talks about uh, there are those who haven't defiled their garments. And, um, you know... This kind of sin, when he talks about defiling their their garments, um, he's not just talking about some minim, you know, minuscule sin here. Um, this defiling of the garments, that phraseology takes place a lot in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. and he says your garments are stained with blood. Uh, you know, you're, you're blood stained, uh, and, you know, and, and so things like that. Uh, you know, these terrible sins that we can do. You know, Peter said we ought to hate even the garments spotted by the by by sin, so mm -hmm. to speak. You know, by by contamination, corruption, and so you know, getting our garments that are supposed to be white spattered with blood or or the blackness of sin, we ought to hate that. Yeah, because Jesus hates that. He died for that, mm -hmm. right? And the reason why we ought to hate it is because he hates it. And secondly, that's the thing that, that separated us from this relationship with yeah. God. Yeah. And th he had to come and do that for us. And so we shouldn't love that. No. Ever. We shouldn't love our sin. No. You know? Um, so he says that they're going to walk with him in white. And by the way, there's a, a great picture in Isaiah 61. I think it's 61.10. Uh, he talks about, um, you know, this, this uh, Jesus who comes like a, um, you know, like a bridegroom who um, covers us in garments, right? As yeah. the bride. Go ahead and read that. Yeah, it says, uh, Isaiah 61 10 says, I will, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul mm -hmm. shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me in the garments of salvation. Mm -hmm. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks, uh, decketh himself uh, with ornament, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Mm -hmm. See, that's a beautiful picture. That's yeah. not just. Hey, you got a white, you know, a white robe, but it's it's uh, you know, bedecked with ornaments like jewels, you yeah. know, precious precious gems, yeah. and you know, uh, it, it really speaks to you know what he'll do when he covers us in in white, you know, yeah, and so you know that it it's always you know I always wondered why why does it have to be a white dress you know white symbolizes purity like yeah. in a marriage right yep and, you know oftentimes you see that the bride is most of the time in white and um you know the, the only thing that's kind of weird is you have the you know the the bride at, at the I mean the groom at the front waiting for the bride it really is the reverse of the picture that we get in scripture right which is the bride's waiting yeah. She's supposed to be 
pure chase, waiting for the, yeah. wait, waiting for the groom to come. Yeah. So maybe in, in that regard, we got the whole picture backwards. <laughs> but um, but still, you yeah. know, they walk down the aisle and they're betrothed together. That There's a beautiful picture in that of Christ in the church. Yeah. yeah. I was looking at the color white, too, uh, more so in the next verse. But uh, I was doing some reading, and it said that in in, in Roman times, these times, that the white would, white would also symbolize victory. Yeah. And speaking of sin, yeah, you know, yeah. That having victory over that, and yeah. um, that's good. And looking at looking at Sardis here, it, it's the first, really, the first church written to here. Unlike Pergamos and Thyatira, because um, per- Pergamos and Thyatira both were largely good, but they had a few bad yeah. people. But Sardis is the exact opposite, yeah. largely not good with a few good people. Yeah. So. And they were barely, a, barely alive. Yeah, these people. Yeah, not much left. These few, these few yeah. have white garments because yeah. they had victory and they were pure. Yeah, you know? I think I mentioned that last week yeah. that they, they're the complete opposite of the churches mentioned before. Yeah, yeah, I think. You and did. you know, um, I would say, you know, and and I hate to make, you know, whole scale comparisons like this, but I think that the church, um, by and large, that there was a greater knowledge of the scripture. You know, back when people read a lot, mm-hmm. there wasn't so many distractions. I remember one of the first sermons I, I uh, gave to the youth uh, back in um, South Valley when we were there, is I talked about how we were distracted by so many different kinds of screens, be it a TV, mm-hmm. a computer. I was now, that. now, fun, I yeah, that. <laughs> phones. You know, smartphones have a screen, and these things just yeah. pull our attention away from things we you know god would have us know yeah now they can be used for good like you know my computer is pretty much uh dedicated toward the scripture and so i do quite a bit quite a bit of study with that you know i do some designing and stuff like that for you know construction but uh same with my phone it's really a bible and a camera (laughs) (laughs) that's what it is and you know sometimes i communicate on it but um it can be used for good so it's not bad you know, I used to be like, okay, that person's playing on their phone. But now I realize most people are carrying around a Bible app, and that's mm-hmm. how they're accessing it. And it's yeah. like, how many times are we looking up something on the fly? Yeah. And we can get a lot faster with, you know, typing in a couple of keywords. Yeah. So, you know, back in the day, people read their Bible. They were, they were uh, intimate with the Bible. Mm-hmm. And so I think that, um, you know, that there was a different kind of walk then. Mm-hmm. Now we're polluted by the screens and things that appear on them. Um, you know, pornography used to be something you had to go to the corner store and purchase right. off the rack, you know. Yeah. Now it's a click away. And some of our young people, even even our adults, oh. are caught up in pornography. Yeah. They're caught up in, in stuff that... And then it gets a hold of them. And they can't break the cycle. They, they just... You know, they get on and they don't want to do it, but their finger goes right to the to the spot, and boom, they it's there, right on yeah. their screen. Well, I mean, I mean, studies have been done um, about just how 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 many children are actually accessing pornography. Yeah. Uh, under under like once your child reaches the age of ten, yeah. More more likely, it's more likely that they have actually viewed it. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it, and it's. That's pretty scary. Because Those because statistics. some of the kids are a lot more savvy and they're introducing them to it. Yeah. You know, you go over to a friend's house, it's yeah. it's not safe anymore. Yeah. You know, you can protect your own house or whatever, but once yeah. your kid leaves, yeah. So I, I would say, uh, in the context we're looking at Sardis, those kind of things would be things that defile yeah, our sure. garment, that mm-hmm. take us away from purity. Things mm-hmm. that you know we we have to be ever more diligent especially with our kids you know you can do filters and all that stuff but you know let's face it uh, I, i'm going to be honest uh most kids today are more savvy with the computer than their parents yeah so if you put some kind of a filter on there man they can do an end around on that all day long yep. if they're good you know <laughs> uh, and that's a lot of kids josh so. is back there laughing i mean it's true right <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 just reality yeah and, you know Sometimes I, I, I ask Josh and Kai about stuff because I realize even though I'm a tech guy, yeah. I, I'm, I've lost a step. Yeah. Same know? here. Same here. And, you know, my, my grandson was already operating a, a smartphone at, you know, two, and now he's really good at it. 
and can navigate. All he needs to do is be able to spell and yeah. God help us after that. Yeah. You know, because he'll be on that thing constantly if we don't stop him. But garments, think yeah. about that. We need to be in the word. We need to be growing. Uh, we need to understand God's view of holiness. Where are we going to get that? In the Bible. Out of the Bible, right? So, um, you know, I, I put down that, you know, a lot of folks, uh, these Christians I was talking about that aren't concerned with walking in white and purity, this symbol of purity, uh, they don't think walking worthy is actually possible. They, they, you know, they've been defeated for so long that they don't think it's actually possible to walk in a holy manner. And yet, uh, you know, so, so they, don't, they don't think it's possible, so they don't teach it, hmm. and they don't practice it. And they're certainly not modeling it. Right. And so, you know, these are things that um, we would do well to say, hey, you know, Paul, Paul said something. And I remember early on when I when I started in ministry, you know, I couldn't say, hey, be ye followers of me. Yeah. You know, I didn't think I was much of an example to be followed after. Yeah. But Paul was saying that about himself. Right. He, he admonished the church, be ye followers of me. And I was like. How come he can say that and I can't say that? And, you know, over time you grow uh, in the word. You grow in grace. You grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And we're talking about growing. Uh, it's a matter of you read these words in the spirit. Uh, you know, he, he says, that's right. That's mm -hmm. truth because he's revealing truth to us. And when that truth hits us, then that becomes a, uh, you know, the power of God to leave this old man and his sin and and the things he does and walk in the victory that that you know yeah jesus is talking about here to john yeah right yeah and so um i, I put here in sardis there were a few just a few yep. that he mentions mm -hmm. that walked in uh, this purity that he talks about who haven't defiled their garments um and he says they'll walk with him in white because they are worthy. Yep. Right? That's right. Now, if you were to poll, do a poll in the church and, and uh, ask church members, hey, do you think you're worthy? Mm. I, I don't know that you'd get anybody <laughs> that said, oh, yeah. No, I'd have a hard time saying that. Yeah. You know? And if they did, you would go, you sure about that? <laughs> right. And, you know, it's like, well, hold like, on. Maybe you're not. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe yeah. you're a narcissist or something. But um, yeah. we should be able to say that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I, I put this verse down, and, and you could share what you got there, but yeah. this out of Ephesians 4 1. He says, uh, This Paul, uh, in his letter to the church at Ephesus, he says, uh, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you. That means I strongly urge you, you know, it's almost like saying, I beg you, that you walk worthy, worthy. of the vocation wherewith you were called, uh, wherewith ye are called. With all lowliness and meekness and long suffering. By the way, that's just all fruit of the Spirit, right? Yep. yep. He's saying walk by the Spirit, forbearing, that means putting up with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond, the of, bond peace. of peace. Yep. Now, you know, that that almost seems like a foreign concept to the to Christ's church today. Mm -hmm. That we would walk worthy. And yet, Paul said that. Jesus uh, actually points out and notes those in Sardis who were working, walking uh, in, in white, mm -hmm. you know, or going to walk with them in white, yeah. in purity. Um, and, and they stood out. Um, I, I don't, I don't want to be a nominal Christian. Sometimes I am. Sometimes I recognize my own weakness. Um, but I don't want to be nominal. No. I want to be exemplary. I want to be able to say like Paul did, be ye followers of me. Yeah. You know, do what I do. Look to him like I look to him. That sort of thing. Well, it's, when we stand before him, eventually, <clears throat> when we do, I mean, I, I want to hear those words, you know, well done. Good, and, good faithful, and faithful servant, right? I, you know, that's what I want to yeah. hear. And yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, I, I'm... On this side of earth, you know, or this side of heaven on earth, I always hated money. Since I was a kid, I always despised it. Yeah. You know, I I saw people greedy for it, and I'm like, easy come, easy go. There's, there's nothing there 
you know, that really represents what we're supposed to be about. I think we know that, hmm. you know, but some people get caught up in it, you know. Uh, people get mad if you, like, get the tracks that look like a legit $20 bill or a $100 bill and you fold it up and leave it on the ground or something. They pick that up. They get furious because it's not actually real money, right? Because yeah. they want that. Um, but we're not supposed to covet, no. you know? And so even even now, I think that, um, you know, desiring what's right in God is, is certainly more preferable. Um, I don't want the rewards so much that are coming in heaven. They'll be there. I trust Jesus said they're there. They're going to go for an eternity. Yep. Uh, I'm good with that. That's his program. That's the way he wants to do it. Um, That's not the center of heaven. No, you know? he is. Yeah. You know, uh, I always think back of what God said to Abraham. He said, uh, you know, Abraham is rich now. He's like got a lot of stuff since mm. he's already gone through Egypt. But he told God told Abraham, Abram at the time, he says, I am thy great and exceeding reward. Mm -hmm. Not the stuff you got. Yeah. You know, not how much more stuff I'm even going to give you. Not even the inheritance uh, of the land and, and everything else that I promised. No, I'm thy great and exceeding reward. And see, that's what I want. Yeah. I, I want to see Jesus. Yeah. Right? I, I want to sit with him. I want to talk to him. And, uh, for as long as he'll let me, you know, I'm sure there's a line for that, but sure. uh, <laughs> I want that, Yeah. you know, and we're going to have a bazillion years to do it. So, you know, plenty of time. Yeah. I mean, I, I got, you know, not that I want to ask him questions. Maybe most of it will be answered when we get there, mm -hmm. but I want to know, like, um, I want to know this love up front and personal yeah. that caused him to leave heaven. And to put on one of these. I mean, if we weren't this, if we weren't flesh to begin with, would yeah. you want this? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know, it's no. it's uh, it really is a body of death. Yeah. E even though we can do some pretty cool things in a human body, um, you know, uh, we like eating, we like, mm -hmm. you know, playing sports, whatever, being able to run when we're healthy. Um, besides other things, uh, really, it gets us in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm the flesh right yeah. and it's weaker than we'll admit oh yeah right it, it's weaker oh, yeah. it gets us in trouble uh you know the the fleshly thoughts come in and uh, you know uh, I, there's just nothing to be desired but i'm not after the rewards in heaven either yeah you know i, I really want to see hey look jesus is worth everything you could lose here on earth yeah he's worth it all yeah get rid of it and you will have gained all, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, I, I just, you know, I think that that's said in here without being said, you know, and a few in Sardis have that figured out. Yeah. Not everybody, but a few. Um, but he says this, and, and this is promise in, in um, uh, verse 5. He says, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. This is how they're going to walk and write with him, right? Uh and it says, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before the angels. Now, I don't know if you picked it up, but just two things I saw right there. Like, we need to overcome. That That message repeated. is repeated throughout the New Testament. Yeah, right? and throughout all these churches. Yeah, New letters. through all yeah. the churches as well. But yeah. we need to overcome. So, you know, again, to overcome. Christians are to overcome uh Meaning they're to defeat the ways of this world, the ways of sin, you know, Satan's attack. I mean, there's so much we're supposed to overcome here. Yeah, well, that's, that's why I said the, the color white yeah. is also a symbol of victory. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That, that, so, I mean, that that's overcoming. That's was there something victory. you wanted to share in there? Uh, I mean, with the white garments, uh, there was also something I, I read from Spurgeon. Okay. Uh, you know, me and Spurgeon, I always find something from him. Uh and he said, but this is actually, he's talking about the opposite side. What about the majority of, of Sardis then? Yeah. If they're, if, if they're not going to be clothed in white, I mean, generally sin in the Bible is actually equated to nakedness um, or, or some form or defiled raiment. But this is how he put it. He says, but what shall be done with such persons as live in the church but are not of it, having a name to live but are dead? Mm. What shall be done with mere professors who are not possessors? What shall become of those who are only outwardly religious, but inwardly are in 
in their gall of, of bitterness. We answer, as good Calvin did once, um, they shall walk in black, for they are unworthy. They shall walk in black, the blackness of God's destruction. They shall walk in black, the blackness of hopeless despair. They shall walk in black, the blackness of uh, incomparable anguish. They shall walk in black, the blackness of damnation. They shall walk in black forever because they were found unworthy. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so that... I yeah, that and, like, I, and I, I think without having said it that well, or, or barely at all, yeah. comparatively, <laughs> um, that is the opposite mm -hmm. of the few here yeah. that he mentions. Yes. The, the ones that... We want to be like the ones in white, but sadly within the church today and i don't mean within ucf i you know i think people know who they are yeah. on a level that no pastor does mm -hmm. god knows mm -hmm. but um you know th this is really like he said they're they're in they're in the church they're not of the church right right, right. and it's like um that's always a, a, a great pain for a pastor to deal with to, to you know look at those who profess faith but they don't possess the truth. They, they, they're not living it. And um, you see them fall to, to such things that are on a scale that are, you know, they're not, they're not small things. They're, they're things that are worthy of damnation. And we're not talking about a lapse for a second. We're not talking about a lapse on a rare occasion when they let their guard down. We're not talking about that. We're talking about a lapse where they just, they, they, they hear the word, they go through, you know, it's kind of like uh, Paul talked about those who um, exercise will worship. Mm -hmm. Don't don't taste, don't touch, don't eat, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. You know, don't handle that. Um, he says it indeed has a show of will worship. In other words, they're, they're exercising their will over the flesh, mm -hmm. but it's not spiritual power and it's not spiritual living. You know, you can do some things by sheer willpower, mm -hmm. right? You can run a marathon by sheer willpower, one step after the other. Yeah. Um, but that's not a godly thing, right. per se. Right. I mean, it could be if you're running for Jesus. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's not necessarily something that you can't do by willpower. So these things that he talked about, they look like they're super spiritual. And we have people that say, well, you know what? I never do that, brother. I don't handle this, I don't touch that, I don't look about, you know, and it's like, yeah, but you do worse stuff. You're boasting, you're full of pride and arrogance, mm. um, you actually talk about people, you hate people, you know, you, you characterize them. Um, isn't that worse yeah. than what you don't do? Yeah. You know, and so when I see that, it's like, you, you, need, you need to submit yourself in lowliness and meekness like we just read about mm -hmm. and and humble yourself before the Lord yeah. you know because that's that's true holiness that's when you're saved you're not saved by uh, taking this uh, road of superiority and saying right. hey look at me you know that's another way that some people say hey being be followers of me uh, you know I'm an example I'm the best example you'll ever have uh, <laughs> Wait a minute now. That, that's the wrong direction. That's the wrong kind of example. Paul didn't go that far. <laughs> no, he didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. He didn't say, you know who you're talking to? No. You know, that kind of thing. So we, we got to watch out for that attitude rising up within us. I think the, the mm -hmm. truth is that it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. We ought to see the likeness of Jesus in our countenance, in our attitude, in our patience, in our long suffering, in our meekness when we're dealing with others. Uh, and dealing with ourself and our own, you know, uh, weaknesses. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how to overcome. And I think that's what he's, yep. you know, encouraging yeah. them to do. Um, now watch the time here. What time yeah. here? We got a little time. Um, he, it, something else I, I um, you know, may note of is like when, when he talks about... Um, for one, overcome, and we overcome all the temptations, endure to the end, that sort of thing, in Christ, right? Not with willpower or the flesh, in Christ. Uh, secondly, he says he's going to blot out um, the names of those who don't walk worthy uh, from the book of life. 
And well, it says, I mean, it says it won't blot out the people from the book. Well, he won't, but he's going to, I mean, the antithesis is true. He's going to blot out those who aren't there. As a matter of fact, in Romans 20 and verse 15, he says that very thing. Whose ever name was not found written in the book of life, yeah. he's going to blot them out. Yeah. Okay, so when, if you look at this term, this uh, phrase to blot out their name out of the book of life, that, that occurs about five times throughout Scripture. Right. And um, the way it's used is, um, it, I guess it's an eye opener. And what it does is it causes some Christians to want to say, hey, you know, I don't want that to happen to me. Huh. What kind of living do I have to be doing or, or yeah, you know, disobedience to get stricken? Yeah. To get struck through where I'm not in the book no more. Yeah, that's where you got to, you kind of have to stop and pause, right? Because you have to remember that you aren't saved by what you do. Right, you were saved Amen. by grace through faith, uh, and we have to remember that the whole context here of this verse is saying, "I will not blot your name out from the book of life." Is not talking about like the, the whole thing is talking about the few who are going to make it. It's the yeah. assurance that they're going to be fine. Yeah, and so we really the context even of this right here is saying, "Hey, be assured you're going to be good. Yeah. I'm not going to blot your name out." Yeah, and I, and so. I think the only way to do that is to, you know, really be in submission. To yeah. the Lord, yeah. so that you know that you're in obedience, right? Because um, the works of the law did not get people saved. I mean, if you, if you were to characterize the Jews, what were they doing? Mm-hmm. They were they were setting out to uh, please God by a righteousness of their own, right. which they could never attain to, because it was by the works of the law. Mm-hmm. It wasn't by faith, like you know. Doug was talking about in his Bible study. It's not by trusting God on face value. It was really by doing uh, works to please God. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, there, there's a caveat there, which is he gave them those works to do. Yeah. You know, people forget that because those things are a picture of his holiness, his his righteousness. Yeah. And, you know, even the Ten Commandments, what is that? Well, that's the pure spiritual purity of god he doesn't have to struggle to do those things yeah. that, that's him and so he wants us to be like him in that fashion but um you know I, I think that what happens is we sometimes get caught up in um thinking about a verse like this and by the way it's a good one i i want to i want to talk about how this is controversial because a lot of people will read that and then they get stuck what I mean by they get stuck is they need to answer that question. Can I have my name blotted out of the book? And so they, they you know, suddenly become theological uh, without really knowing the Bible well enough. Yeah. Um, and that becomes a, a point of, you know, I got to find out. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of like um, the, the verse that Jesus talked about to the Pharisees. You know, you're in danger of blaspheming the Holy Ghost. You you will not be forgiven of that in this world or the age to come. Yeah. Uh, so they're like, well, have I done that? Um, <laughs> you, you know, there. That's true. There are some guidelines here, uh, things that he already just said, so that we can be sure we're not doing those things. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is to obey what he did tell us to do. You know, the the chiefest among those, and you know, sadly, uh, it's a struggle even in the Christian community, but. To love one another as Jesus loved his disciples he said yeah. love one another even as I've loved you right in this that's how my disciples will be known by their love one to another um, you would think that if the Christians didn't understand or have anything else they'd have that yeah because that's simple it's simple to understand I'm not saying it's simple no, to I, do yeah no I right it, yeah it's simple to understand and the one thing we ought to be working toward or, or dying to is this hatred right and I think there's another thing that goes along with it and you know when he um, you know spoke on the um, Mount of Olives he, he told the disciples that um, to forgive right mm-hmm. for in the same measure you forgive others it will be meted back out to you or measured back out to you uh, whoever doesn't forgive neither will his father forgive him yeah right so it's like People, people want to, um, they want to justify that. Well, what if somebody does this? Do I have to forgive them then? 
Um, I, I think you're looking for, you know, you're barking up the wrong tree, so to speak. Yeah. He said, do it. Yeah. And if you're a Christian and his disciple, it's not a matter of, you know, what are the parameters that I do that? Because I think he told Peter, look, not seven times, seven, seven times, times 70. seventy. In other words, it, that's unlimited, Pete. Yeah. He right? didn't actually mean four hundred ninety times. No. No. <laughs> but we almost we almost want to go there. Yeah. Right. And, and say, okay, well, that's four eighty nine, buddy. You got one more. Yeah. And then I don't have to forgive you no more. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, we're to forgive even as he forgave us our transgressions. Yeah. Right, and so we don't want to do that. Yeah. Right. We have to love somebody, and we'll have to forgive them unconditionally. Right. I've been challenged by that. Have you? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could think of that one person. If you're thinking right now of somebody that you really are struggling with forgiving, you haven't done it. You haven't obeyed. Uh, if you got somebody on your mind, or several somebodies are popping into your head. You need to be about obeying Jesus and getting that done. So yeah. rather than worry about like this this particular passage that he's going to blot, you know, uh, he won't blot their name out of his book of life, the ones who obey. And we're wondering, well, what if we're not one of those people right at this moment? Am I getting? Am I going to get blotted out? Can he do that? Will he do that? Hmm. Meaning, I have lost my salvation. You know. For me, um, I try not to make that an academic thing. Yeah. It's a, a simple matter of there are some he's going to blot out of his book. He says that in Revelation 20, uh, in verse 15, I believe it is. Yeah. But does that mean um, that everybody who was born was written in it first and then they get blotted out? I, I can't agree with that because he you know, later says that their names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So yeah. does that mean that he entered their name? Uh, so people don't, you know, they want to get too hung up on that sort of stuff. I would tell you, look, focus on obeying Christ at what he gave us clear commands to do and search your heart, examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. Um, see if there's any, like David said, wicked way within me, right? Yeah. We ought to be doing that. And if we find those things, we ought to be going toward um, remedying that God's way, not worrying about this particular question. Is there something? Oh. I was just trying to clarify something there. Um, looks like it was a command. What is? It's a command to forgive. Yeah. 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 What from, did I say? From Evelyn. No, I think they were just... Yeah. It was it was commanded. Yeah. Well, and that's why I said it. Yeah. He also commanded us to love one another, and those things go with each other, right? Yeah. Yeah. Love one another. Forgive even as I have forgiven you. Yeah. Wasn't a suggestion. <laughs> yeah. No. Right? No. Okay, well, you might so, want to do this. No, that's not what it was yeah. like. And so when we look at, you know, the things that get, get somebody's name blotted out, whether... They're stricken. They've always were in there, and they get stricken out. Yeah. I'm not trying to answer that question. Hmm. I, I think that there's, um, you know, that in terms of an argument, there are much more favorable arguments uh, toward eternal salvation, or you know, that you're eternal, that you're eternally secure in Christ. Mm -hmm. You won't lose it, and you know, if you think about that, that could be everything from. Hey, you know, I woke up this morning and uh, where's my salvation? I had it last night when I went to bed and then <laughs> you lost it. You know, it could be that. Or can you do something to either walk away? I've heard pastors say that. Throw preachers. it away or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I have free will so I could walk away. Well, Jesus said nobody can snatch you out of his hand. Nobody can snatch you out of his father's hand. Who's even greater than he was here on earth. Um, then... What? But I can just go one day just on a whim. I'm walking away. See you bye. Now, here's the weird thing. There are a few people who probably spent a lifetime. Uh, as a matter of fact, in the last year, I've seen three people that I don't know who they are. One was an author. One, Two of them were uh, lead Christian band 
members. Yep, no one of them. Yep. Uh, there was one yesterday, oh. and he and he walked away. Uh, yesterday, the day before, and it's like, okay. And, you know, we're quick to say this. Well, he was never saved. Um, I, I don't want to be so callous and ignorant that I, I'm, I don't even fear that could happen to me. Yeah. No. Right? I, I don't want to be like that. So I, I think that when I see somebody do that, I'm cautious. I'm careful enough to examine myself in that moment and go, look... I don't want to be wherever this guy is yeah. in his heart, you know, in the blackness that Spurgeon talked about. So rather than try to debate that question, it's like, look, do you want to go to hell? That's the real question. Yeah. And if not, then I would say submit yourself to the Lord, right? Yeah. Lowliness of mind, meekness, long suffering, obey him to love, to forgive, you know. Be filled with the fruit of the Spirit. Obey the Spirit. And, you know, serve Him. Right? Be a living sacrifice. Hmm. Right? So if you do all of that stuff, then I don't have to worry about answering that question. And that's just for me. Yeah. Right? And I'm not doing those things because I'm afraid of that possibility. I'm doing those things because He said to do it, and I love Him, and He bought and paid for me. I'm not my own anymore, yeah. which is just a verse that says you probably can't lose it right? <laughs> yeah. uh, once you've trusted him yeah. and he put his spirit in you because he'll never leave you or forsake you. But however, I, I don't want to find out if you can lose it. That, that's not an experiment for me. Yeah, I'm not trying to find out. So you know? rather, rather than getting caught up in the debate of whether you can or cannot lose your salvation, why don't you just check your walk with the Lord to see if you're saved? Right. Yeah. Right. I think and it's pretty and furthermore, if you find out your walk isn't what it ought to be in any area, why don't you strengthen that? Yeah. Like he told Sardis that before we got to that last week. Yeah. You know, you're dead church, but strengthen that which remains yeah. and is about to die. Yeah. I mean, I kind of had that in my notes, but yeah. Um, so I would I would say, look, don't just follow the crowd on something like that. Don't just uh, follow what most pastors or commentators say. I would say, look, do all you can to walk worthy Sure. Uh, in yeah. the vocation wherewith you were called. Mm -hmm. Just like Paul said in Ephesians, right? So that we're not looking at the possibility of bl being blotted out from his book. That, that's what I would say, mm -hmm. you know, uh, rather than try to answer that on some theological level that you may or may not be equipped to do. Yeah, well, I think whatever, whatever side you even stand on, whether you think you can or cannot lose your salvation, I think both sides would agree with that. Yeah. And live a holy life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so that's what we can agree with rather than, well, I believe you can lose. Well, I believe you can't. I mean, okay. Well, do either of you believe that we ought to be doing these things that Jesus said to do? Uh, well, yes. Let's do that. Yeah. And, you know, quit, you know, quit trying to split hairs, right? Yeah. So... Uh, that that's kind of something that um, you know w when I get to controversial stuff like that there's you know you could probably um, put Hebrews 10 in there that talks about you know there's no sacrifice after this after you know yeah you, it's you, actually you, on the radio on no the right here <laughs> yeah no repentance no sacrifice uh, left uh, if you sin willfully after that it's like I, I don't want to be that guy I don't want to be a guy that there's no sacrifice left for. And, you know, we can try to explain that theologically. We could we could dig deeper. Um, but I'm not satisfied by some of the answers I get. Like, we're well, talking about those who were never saved. Well, the, the Bible's written to the church. <laughs> and so he's talking to saved people. And, you know, is he referencing unsaved people? It could be. But... When, when I look at stuff like that, I'm not so quick to try to get theological all of a sudden. Yeah, heed the warning. Yeah. You know? like that, to me, that's what it is. It's a, it's a warning to not do that. Yeah. And so, hmm. um, that, same with this kind of verse. So, you know, I don't know how other people approach the Bible, uh, you know, how they wrestle with uh, finding answers like this. For things that, that are like that, I put them on the shelf 
Uh, I'll study them out, you know, but if I don't get the answer uh, in, in full where I'm convinced that's from the Spirit, I'll shelf that, you know. And I like to, I like to just dive in deeper on what I ought to be doing, what yeah. I should be doing. So, anyway, I, you know, that, that's just something I thought that, um, you know, we, we ought to certainly be diligent about studying the Scripture. We certainly ought to look into such things and try to answer that from Scripture. They're all not so easy. Yeah. Right? Like, uh, you know, if you talked about pre-trib or, you know, mid-trib or post-trib, those weren't easy because there are a lot of verses that you could land on any one of those three answers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, I, th I think that the vast majority of it lands on, you know, pre-tribulation rapture. But not so much that I would say, look, I ain't got nothing to worry about. I'm out of here. You better be prepared uh, for it just in case. Yeah. I mean, like... You know, I mean, it's not 100%. <laughs> and if I had that attitude, but I was alive right now in 2020, yeah. I might be questioning that. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's true. Like, what else are we going to have to endure? I mean, yeah. 2020 has been a roller coaster yeah, so far, right? Well, we can't even meet in the church. Um, so he says, you know, um, and by the way, you know, I, I believe when you look at eternal security, there are things that I see also that are very encouraging. One, Paul said, look, the thing that I would not do, that I do and I keep doing, mm -hmm. um, that means Paul's struggling with sin. He's not trying to live there. It's a struggle. It's a battle. He hates his flesh, and it's a battle. So I realize, okay, I can expect a battle. Mm -hmm. Okay, doesn't mean I'm not saved if I have a battle. All right? I look at the guy that Paul uh, addresses or talks about in first Corinthians he was sleeping with his father's wife his stepmother basically I don't know what happened to his dad but I'm assuming he's gone and this guy's now taking her as his own wife she must have been like a younger woman yeah and Paul said look throw him out yeah. throw him out let Satan destroy the body yeah but that his soul may be saved I'm like what are you saying, Paul, that this guy's got a shot at salvation? I've had people tell me, well, look, th this guy was a murderer. There's no way he's going to heaven. Um, he repented and professed Jesus profusely yeah. at the end of his life. How do you know? I mean, we were no better than that guy in terms of you know, scale. We weren't like better human beings. No, we all fall short yeah. of the glory of God. So um, Paul killed people. Mm-hmm. A lot, apparently. Um, you know, at least the blood was on his hands because he was something, something in the, you know, assembly. Um, Moses killed somebody in cold blood. You know how I know it? If you look at the description, he looked left, <laughs> then he looked right, and then the next verse says, and he smote the Egyptian. Yeah, he knew what he was doing. You know? Yep. It was at least premeditated in the moment. Yep. Let me make sure nobody's looking before I jack this Egyptian. Somebody was looking still, but hey. Right? <laughs> and so he he made it to heaven. Yep. You know? And so, um, you know, just check ourselves. Check our understanding. Don't base it on somebody's opinion. Get in the scripture. Diligently search it out. Look for it yourself. Yeah. Pray about it. You know, God's faithful. It may, the answer may not come today. It may not come in a year. may not come in 10 years. But God's faithful. And it will come. Yeah. Okay? So, lastly, he just um, says this. He says, let he that hear. hath an ear. Let him hear. Let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Again, I cannot escape the fact that he's not only talking to these seven churches, but that includes us today. Yeah. Right? Because this is supposed to bless anybody that reads and keeps these things which are written therein. Not just to those seven churches, but I think John, as I pointed out in chapter 1, knew he was writing scripture. Yeah. These things write down yeah. as a record, right? And so he knew what he was doing. Yeah. And so that would be something for our benefit even today. Yeah. Right? So... 
I kind of approached it this way. I backed up. I said, well, okay, well, what's the takeaway from Sardis? Because there was a lot said here, but it was very short. Yeah. Okay. Here's what I took away. If we don't take away anything else from this letter to the church at Sardis, we ought to pay close attention to, first, the church's description, the way he characterized it by Jesus himself, right? Which is, they had a name, i.e. a reputation, that they yeah. liveth. Right. But what do he say? But they're dead. You dead. Yeah. You are dead. Yeah. And let, and, me, let, me, let me follow that up with just this quote. Okay, go ahead. Uh, uh, Barclay. I don't know. Yeah, Barclay. Uh, yeah. William Barclay. Yeah, William. That's right. Uh, the church of Sardis was at peace, but it was the peace of the dead. Yeah. 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 Um, and then another one. I, I Can you pronounce that name? Because I can't. It's probably... Uh, Cared? Cared or card. Yeah. yeah. Cared. He said this. He said, Sardis was a perfect model of inoffensive Christianity. Mm -hmm. Their problem was not scandalous wickedness, but a decent death. Their image set alive, but it, but in substance, they were dead. Right? So, um, As a pastor who wants living vitality of the Spirit, mm -hmm. to see the Spirit freely flow through a church, mm -hmm. to see Him equip and, um, you know, deliver saints from bondage, the bondage of sin, uh, that's the goal. Then to see them uh, be mentored and shaped into uh, faithful disciples of the Lord, that they go on and do greater works. Yeah. Right? That's the goal as a pastor. To, to, if somebody were to say, hey, Pastor Kai, you, you know, not just somebody, but particularly Jesus, mm -hmm. say, well, you had a reputation that you were alive, but you know what? UCF's dead. Mm. Well, that would kill me. Yeah. Right? I, I don't want that. All right. And so when I think about Sardis in this vein, I, I think, okay, I don't want to be described that way personally. I don't want our church, our congregation as a whole to be described that way, you know, as a church. But I want to see us alive. Yeah. And I want to see us strengthening that which is, remains but is about to die. Hmm. Like, don't let it die, you know. Yeah. You know, you could actually die of a heart attack. Your heart stops. You're dead. But somebody begins to do CPR and resuscitate you hmm. and life comes back. You know, you are almost a goner. But, you know, let's say you go to the hospital and, hey, you came close. You were, you know, you got a second chance. Yeah. What are you going to do with that second chance? Not go back to being dead. You're right. You know, Actually so. Actually be alive. Yeah. Be so th this was, um, yeah. you know, I just see, again, the grace of God here going, hey, it ain't over yet. But that fat lady's warming up. She's getting ready to sing. <laughs> and once she sings, it's over. Yeah. Right? You know, I was uh, I was doing a Facebook scroll one day. And I, I found some good news for our church. But then somebody kind of turned it into kind of a really convicting quote. Um, is that, that people that are asymptomatic with COVID-19, yeah. they're, you know, they're not spreading as much as once thought. Yeah, they're not likely to be yeah. as contagious. Yeah, coming from the World Health Organization. Um, they said that, and it's like, that's actually some good news. And then I saw somebody kind of take that. It's like, you know, COVID-19 doesn't spread as well through asymptomatic, but neither does the church. I was mm. like, ouch. Hmm. Yeah, a church that's asymptomatic, that has no symptoms of, of being a Christian. Of being infected with Christianity. They won't. Yeah. And, and I heard something else that was kind of along those lines. You know, we're waiting for a vaccination, right? Yeah. Uh, somebody said uh, years back, they said they've been inoculated with the gospel. Yeah. And so, you know, you get a vaccine so that you don't actually get the disease. In fact, my grandson just got two shots yeah. yesterday. He ran a fever the entire day. Oh, man. And these are shots he's already had. Yeah. But it gave him a fever this time around again. Yeah. So his body's responding to it, and it's elevating his temperature. Today he's fine, which means That's good. the body remembered it. Kick in the antibodies. Took it out. But, you know, when you're inoculated with the gospel and it no longer affects you, Yeah. the good news, you no longer care. You're indifferent, apathetic, whatever. 
You've heard it a million times. You know, there was a time I thought I should go up and, and receive Christ and be baptized. Uh, but, you know, they say that a lot. I, I'll do it one day. You're inoculated. You, you have been vaccinated against responding to the gospel because yeah. you said no. You know, that's why uh, the writer of Hebrews said, if you hear his voice today, if you hear the Spirit speaking, do not harden your hearts as they did in the provocation when they provoked the Lord in the wilderness, yeah. right? He was speaking. He was coming to them. He was leading them by a pillar of cloud, but they had hard hearts. And no matter what he did, I mean, they walked across dry ground. Yeah. And instead of obeying him and listening, they were inoculated against his voice. Yeah. Right? And died in the wilderness. Mm. Uh, we ought to, when... When the Spirit, as uh, you know, I think it says elsewhere in Acts, but it says their, they, their hearts were pricked, in other words, poked, and they were cut to the quick. You know, we, we don't use that kind of phraseology no. anymore, but the quick of your cuticle yep. means the part that's alive. You don't know you've hit it till you hit it. <laughs> and <laughs> you once you hit it, it, you're like, whoa. Yeah. You know, that's the alive part. You don't want to, like, get under that nail you know, yeah. and get to the live part. But we need to have a heart that can hear God. Yeah. But worse than that, mm -hmm. uh, we, we can have hearts that kind of build a wall up against it because we don't want him to control us mm. because we're naturally rebels. But we got to respond when he says, hey, now's the time. Yeah. Right? So... Anyway, um, that was a takeaway, and um, mm. I, I think the last part was the, the part that I already mentioned, but, you know, to strengthen the things which remain and are about to die. So they were on, if, you, if you're looking at a graph, they were on a steady decline, mm. and they were about to flat line completely. Yeah. There was still some life, some signs of life. There were still a few people that were walking worthy yeah um i would say listen to them put them in charge be in obedience to that leadership right because they were doing something right jesus yeah. was telling them you know we talked about pergamus i think it was and they had done a 180 yeah they changed because mm -hmm. years later they were obeying in the spirit right that's right so i mean uh I, I don't really know what became of Sardis, but... Um, yeah, look into that. I, I don't think I don't it's know. good. <laughs> they're not sound... They're not known today. They don't sound good. You know, but... Um, I'm known as the dead church. Yeah. And we don't want to be that, so... Next week, we'll see a little bit yeah. more of a better... Yeah, next example. week is probably the, the complete opposite. I actually prepped it as though we'd go through quite a bit of it today. Same here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, Church of Philadelphia... I would encourage you to tune into that because not everything in the scripture is negative. Uh, this is a church who's getting it right. And, you know, let's look at the things they did that were right. Mm -hmm. And how can we um, emulate that, you know, not out of envy, but how can we do those things within our own body mm -hmm. um, to see Christ, you know, uh, reach, reaching many, especially in this context. So. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I got for tonight. That's all we got. Hope that I'm... hope that bless you and you know encourage you maybe challenged you. Um, that's something that ought to happen. But um, you have some prayer requests still. Yeah, we got quite yeah. a few prayer requests this okay. evening. So um, keep praying for Carrie and uh, her niece Tiffany. Okay. Um, <laughs> Evelyn just said that this church is not dead; it's alive. I feel it, Pastor. Praise praise the Lord. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's just be praying for the church yeah, to sure. continue to, you know, to continue to grow. Yeah, she uh, Evelyn's also asking for prayer for her health and finances. Okay, uh, praying for her children. Uh, she's listed them here: Eric, Jeff, Lisa, Vanessa, to come back to the Lord. Um, Kathy is asking for prayer for Pauline, Liz's grandma. Hmm. And she just had a stint put in the past Monday. She's sore but in good spirits. So, I, I think this is the second one, maybe. Did she just have one put in not long ago? I'm not she sure. She had something done. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Javi, praying for a friend, Luis, 
who's uh, recently passed, so Beth will look for comfort there. Mm. That's sad to hear. And then okay. Shane, praying All for right. his family. All right. Well, let's pray for those things, and then uh, we'll we'll close it up for the night. But uh, I'll go ahead and pray. Yeah. All right. Father God, we just, uh, again, thank you, Lord, for this challenge. Um, Lord, this is a challenge to our own church, to our, our own faith, uh, as we want to walk in a way that uh, we would be described even as those who were worthy, walking, uh, who will walk in white with you, Lord. Uh, we just pray, Lord, that you change our hearts, mold and shape us into who we ought to be. Father, take these uh, messages that you gave to the church so long ago, make them relevant for us today, make them alive, and make those words alive within us today that we would even be uh, able to change. And Father, and to do the work that uh, you called us to do. Lord, we just uh, want to lift up uh, um, just Tiffany once again. We just pray for um, just all to go well, Lord, that you would guide the doctors and the staff and all who uh, work with Tiffany as she brings this baby into the world, Lord. We just pray that um, that mom and baby would both be healthy and that uh, everyone will do fine and have a speedy recovery. Uh, Lord, we want to pray for Evelyn and just um, for her health and finances, Lord, and uh, we do pray for her children, uh, Eric, uh, Jeff, Lisa, Vanessa, to come back to the Lord. Uh, Lord, we know that you're able to draw people. It's your, You do that by your spirit. It's not by uh, any, any devices or cunning of man, but it's your own spirit who, who draws them. And so, Father, we pray that they would be drawn, that they would uh, just enter into a relationship with you, Lord, uh, through your son, Jesus. And uh, Father, we just want to pray also for uh, Miss Pauline and uh, just uh, this procedure she's had done and she's received a stent, Lord. And uh, Father, we just pray for comfort for her as she is sore. But Lord, we pray uh, most of all that this will uh, help fix her or, and restore her blood flow. And so, Father, that she would uh, have many more years of health and service to you. Uh, Father, we just pray for a speedy recovery for her. Lord, we lift up uh, Javi's uh, uh, friend who has passed away, this uh, Luis and uh, Angeles. Uh, Father, we just uh, do pray for his family, who is no doubt uh, hurting. Uh, Lord, uh, we don't know if this young man knew Jesus or not, but we we just pray that uh, that he did, and that many others uh, through his death will even consider their own short lifespan. Lord, we all uh, have but few years on the planet. And so, Father, I pray that we would live them all for you. Uh, just encourage Javier also, as um, he, he no doubt is feeling uh, pain and uh, through the loss of his friend. But, Father, we just lift him before you as well. And, uh, Father, just use this time, uh, we pray, to uh, let your Christians be known and surround this family who's hurting and uh, just to bring comfort, Lord, and, and a supply of whatever they may have need of. So, Father, we lift up to you, lastly, Shane and his family. Uh, Lord, much turmoil there. We just lift Shane before you and just ask that you fill him with your wisdom as he speaks to his family members on a, a number of various uh, things that they're struggling with. And, Father, that uh, you would give him the right words and the right scripture that he will be able to encourage and steer others away from uh, both uh, things that would harm them and, and put their eternity in jeopardy, and Father, that uh, he would do so with the, the fruit of the Spirit, with patience and kindness and, and love. And Father, we just pray that uh, you just fill him with your grace. And Father, as we depart from this Bible study now, we just pray for all of those who have been tuned in, Lord, that you would just also be gracious to them as well, Lord, and let your light shine upon them. Uh, Father, as we are uh, continuing in this uh, uh, COVID quarantine, Father, we pray that you just give us the wisdom when to meet, and soon we know that uh, there are others coming down with it. We've been watching a recent spike, and so, Father, we know that uh, we don't want to jeopardize the health of, of loved ones within the church. So, Lord, give us wisdom on, on how we might meet and, Lord, still maintain safety uh, within our congregation. Uh, Father, we love you. We thank you for your grace even during these tough times. And Father, we thank you for your supply. And all this we do just ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We'll see you soon. God bless.